Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new game of StarCraft 2 Heart of the Swarm. Today we're gonna take a look at a subscriber game and I'm going to be analyzing his game and the hero for this time is going to be none other than Guru. Now if you want to be part of this and you want me to analyze your game, make sure to hit the subscribe button on Twitch TV, it helps directly support me, but obviously also you'll get a chance for a couple of subscriber perks and this is one of them. Now today I'm going to be analyzing Guru and Guru is a silver level Zerg player and he had a question about this Zerg versus Staren game in specific. He loses this one in the end and he's like, Loco, how do I manage to deal with this? And the one question he posed to me is how do I spend my minerals? And this is one of these issues that a lot of lower league players will definitely have problems with because like, you know, this early game is really strong. Like, honestly, Guru's early game is really, really strong. He drones really greedily, he gets the early queens out, he, he really plays it very well. He scouts efficiently, as you can see with Zerkings right here, knowing exactly what is going on right now by the Terran player, even having this little overload scout to poke in and checking the natural. And honestly, the early part of the game is super good from Guru. Now, after that, after we get in the little part of the game, or the middle part of the game, he will actually start having some issues that we will see arrive very, very shortly. But in the early part of the game, it's very strong. Now, what's gonna happen eventually, spoiler alert, the Terran player is simply gonna move out with Maria Marauder and Siege Tanks, and he will just sort of roll over Guru right here. Now, there are a couple of things that I want to be changing in this one, so hopefully Guru can learn from this, and hopefully he will see things change next time around. Uh, but first and foremost, we're gonna take a look at this game in a really quick fashion, as you can see, we're on times four right now. Uh, we're gonna take a quick look at this game, see what, uh, what the general outline of the game is, and... Um, yeah, after this we will actually jump into the replay in more in depth. Now what do we see from Applet, uh, who is the Tyrant player right now? He's getting a ton of upgrades out. Um, looks like he started to produce a couple of siege tanks, might even start some medevic production. There we go. And very soon, he will actually just start picking up his stuff and literally just move across the map and kill him. Like, that's literally what's going to happen right now. Now, Guru, as you can see, his question was, how do I manage to spend my minerals and gas? Well, as you can see, this is really where things start stacking up. Right now, we already see a thousand gas, 1600 minerals, and that is all due to his really, really well-played earliest part of the game, right? He played that early part so well that he literally does not have any stuff right now or any larva available to be able to actually spend all of this. Now, he's going to go for Mutalisk. I'm going to start poking around the map a little bit, but here we go. The turn player is going to move out. Move across the map, actually uh, make sure that he doesn't pass any kind of overworld coverage. And he's actually having a little bit of delay right here because of the mutas are annoying. But here we go. He's gonna move right here into the third base of the Zerg player. He will just sort of stim up, search up his tanks, and the Zerg player is kinda dead. That is basically what happened. So, what went wrong in this game, right? Like, Guru was allowed to sit back. Guru was allowed to macro. Guru had a bigger income than his opponent. How does that make sure that he actually loses the game? Because he simply had more income. And how did he manage to lose this in the end? So, let's have a look at that more in depth. Well, it's gonna be a slow and painful death. These mutas are going to town in the main base meanwhile, but looks like that's not going to be enough. And GG will be called very, very shortly. Use losing the natural right there as well. And the Terran player has so many forces left that, yeah, this is not going to go very well at all. So, here we go. And GG should be called any moment right now. Oop. Oop. Yeah, slow and painful loss right there. And he will GG out of the game very soon. So, what went wrong in this game? Now, there's a couple of things. Um, I'm, I'm hopefully going to be explaining you this efficiently. There's a couple of things that I would definitely like to see change. So, let's go back all the way to the start. Now, as some of you might have noticed right there... Um, Guru decided to open up with a spawning pool first into a hatchery. Now that is one of these things um, that you can put a lot of emphasis on because honestly like hatchery first is just a lot uh, a lot better all around but I don't mind the spawning pool first. Spawning pool first is just a lot safer, it is not necessarily absolutely terrible. Uh, some pro gamers even opt to go for that such as Fortix, he oftentimes opens up with a spawning pool first in ZVT and it's one of these things that you can definitely change up. So I'm not going to put a lot of emphasis on that. As I said, the early part of the game from Guru was very strong. He's doing some efficient scouting right here, he's getting a pretty quick hatchery up. Um, he should be poking in right here in the natural, but that is all fine. Um, he knows that his opponent is not doing much cheekiness. Um, and he's just having these Zerkings out for safety. So, so far, pretty much Grandmaster level, right? Like, this is absolutely zero, zero mistakes so far. Now, where are things gonna go wrong? Let's slow the game down a little tiny bit. Obviously, like we could see, 
Um, he will start saving up a ton of minerals very, very shortly, and we're gonna try and make sure that that does not happen. Now, that is the first thing that we're gonna take a look at. How will he be able to spend all of these minerals and all of this gas? The second thing that we're going to take a look at, and that we will actually first discuss, is going to be the build order. What does Guru do that actually allows him um, to get so much income up and then not really use all of that income. So he's getting the gas guys at a pretty reasonable timing. Um, having some pretty decent crease spread going on. Obviously there's room for improvement right there. But once more, not going to be focusing on that because it's the general outline that we want to be fixing. Now normally, to give you a little bit of an indication, and the first thing that I would adjust if I was a silver level Zerg like Guru, is my third base timing. He has full vision of everything that's going on, right? He knows there's a natural base up, he has even Zergling scouting the front, he scouted this, and what can the Terran player really do off of two barracks at this point in the game um, that Queens can't deal with? Uh, nothing. So, Guru knows, okay, my opponent is going for a pretty decent standard opener. He's even getting the bunker, so all indications are right there that he's not going to be moving out. Now, to give you a little bit of reference, a normal third base in Zerg versus Terran will be built around the six minute mark. Right now we are six minutes and 23 seconds into the game and the third base is not up. So this is the first thing that I would 100% of the time change. There is very little reason right now not to have a third base. Now you can sometimes delay it a little bit. I know some Zerg players like to get it around the six and a half to seven minutes, but that is the absolute latest. Now let's have a look when Guru decides to take this third base. Um, here we go, going to be speeding up the game a little bit. Seven minutes right now. And we still do not see the third base. We see a road warn going down. We see a lair going down, but still no third base. Eight minutes has passed. Eight and a half. Almost nine minutes. When do we see the third base, Guru? I don't mean to be mean, but there we finally go. Almost 10 minutes into the game is when Guru finally takes this third base. And that is absolutely way, way, way too late. If you're a silver level Zerg or a gold level Zerg or anything, really, if you're any level Zerg, try and go for a six minute third hatchery, between six to six and a half minutes third hatchery in Zerg versus Terran when you know it's this sort of a setup, right? Because Applet, Applet the Terran player, has absolutely zero ways of moving out right now. Let's have a look at the units right now, okay? Let's just be fair. There are three marines out on the map. Let me just, let that just sink in, okay? There's three marines out on the map. There's two marines in production, so in about five seconds time, there will be like five marines out. But is that going to kill a third base? No, absolutely never. So make sure to get this third base up as soon as you possibly can, which is usually between six and a six and a, or six and six and a half minutes. Now, that also instantly brings us to the next issue. Let's go back to the 10 minute mark. Um, the next issue is that Guru will not be able to spend all of these minerals. Um, and honestly, that is one of the big things that you definitely want to be working on after fixing this third base, um, is making sure that you spend all of these minerals, right? Because you're getting all these drones up, you're getting all that income up, you're getting all those gas geysers up, just to make sure you have a bigger economy than your opponent, right? Well, if you're not going to be able to spend those minerals, you will not be able to convert that extra income you're having over your opponent into extra units that will actually be able to kill your opponent. So the big thing, whenever you're stacking up minerals to first check is going to be queen injects. Because obviously queen injects are the ones that actually generate the larva, and the larva is obviously the things that you can spend your minerals and gas on. So first of all, let's have a look at that. Now, let's actually see if he injects right here. Pretty good so far, okay? Um, I could be I could be very very annoying right now and tell you okay there's basically a full inject miss so far but 11 minutes into the game silver leak I am okay with this 25 energy wasted means there's one full inject wasted it is not ideal but I'm okay with this the queen injects are pretty decent however keep in mind this third base should have been injected by now around five times, four to five times, okay, is when you would usually see the larva pop off. Now, there would be around 20 extra larva um, that would be available. Keep in mind, also, these larva would have been available. So, in the end, Guru probably missed out on about 30 larva in total. Now, keep in mind, if you want to be making roaches, roaches cost 75 minerals, 25 gas. Look at the min minerals and gas that Guru has right now. That would easily be spent right now if those injects would have been perfect. So, the one thing that Guru 
and any level Zerg player really want to be focusing on as much as possible whenever you notice you are actually saving up minerals and gas is making sure that those queen injects are absolutely spot on, okay? The spot on queen injects will actually allow you to spend the income that you're getting. And that is the big thing that everyone definitely needs to understand. If you're doing a build order, that is awesome. But if you're not getting the income that you, or you're getting the income that you need, but you're not being able to spend that income that you need, you're gonna get issues like this, where you're gonna start making spine callers just to get rid of some of that money. Um, now, obviously, keep in mind this third base would have been up already, but whenever you do find yourself going for a high mineral count, okay, whenever you do find that you're actually saving up more minerals than you should because you did miss a couple of injects, that is cool. Always, 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 in that situation, make a macro hatchery. I know there's a lot of people that will watch live streams or you watch pro games and you will see, okay, a Zerg player is never really getting um, a macro hatchery until he has four bases out, you know. The reason for this is because pro gamers never miss their queen injects that much. They will sometimes miss them, but they will not nearly miss it as much as you will. That is just a fact to um, keep in mind. So whenever you notice you're saving up minerals, don't think in the trance, okay, I can't get a macro hatchery until I have this fort base up and running. Always think, okay, I'm saving up minerals. I want to be spending my minerals and I want to be getting more larvae income to be able to make an actual army eventually. Let's make a hatchery. Now you can actually keep a little bit of a guideline on that let's say you're on three hatcheries whenever you're going over like six to seven hundred minerals make a macro, hat macro hatchery period every single time you're going over 700 minerals make a macro hatchery um, now keep in mind this is not going to um, be the best and the most ideal way to play but it will eventually allow you to actually spend those minerals and actually spend the income that you're getting. Now over time when you actually play more Starcraft it will be much much easier. Over time once your queen and jack start kicking in better and you will actually be able to generate all the larvae that you need you won't need all of these macro hatcheries. But keep in mind you're not a professional gamer you are allowed to make more ha macro hatcheries. It is not bad for a example to play six hatcheries off of three bases even though you never see a pro gamer do that it is not a horrible thing honestly it would have been much better right now if guru would have actually made three macro hatcheries because that would have gotten rid of all these income or all of these minerals and it would have actually allowed him to spend his income later on in the game so that is the first and most important thing on how to spend your income and how to spend your minerals get an early third base work on your queen injects as much as possible and get macro hatcheries whenever it's necessary. Now, the last and final thing I'm going to be covering in, in this replay is the army composition that Guru is going for. I like the addition of a couple of roaches, but I'm not the biggest fan of it. Honestly, I would go for a standard um, a standard unit composition in ZVT, which would pretty much always le be Lynx and Bane Lynx and Mutalisk. So right now, Guru is going for... Um, for Roach Mutalisk, it is okay, but it's not going to work versus the army composition that Applet is going for. Let's go to the very end of the game where we see the Terran player move in right now, right around here. Um, imagine right now, Guru, if you're a Guru in this situation and you have Lynx and Bailings and Mutalisk. Imagine what would happen, okay? First and foremost, what you never want to be doing is having all of these Mutalisk across the map uh, because you're gonna need those to actually defend this push. This is pretty much an all-in right now from the Terran player, guys. Keep in mind, if a Terran player is only off of two bases right now, he does not have a third command center. He is not looking to continue this game. So you need these units at home in order to defend because you have a third base up in mining. That means if you take a look at income right now, the Zerg player is at a significant income advantage right now. So keep in mind, whenever your opponent is going off of a two base push you'll likely want to have all your units at home to defend now that said imagine there would be zerglings and banelings right here this army dies to anything called zergling and baneling even if you have your mutalisk at home and you can spare the apm to shift click between those siege top siege tanks you will have a genuinely easy easy time uh, to defend this now also keep in mind if you were Spending all your minerals and you had the perfect queen and jacks once more. If you were able to spend this many minerals, let's see. 100 minerals is 4 zerglings, right? That would mean 3,000 minerals would be 120 zerglings. Uh, there would be... I, can, I shouldn't do math on a live game, but or on a live recording. But you can see there would be tons and tons of zerglings out right now. 
if the Queen of Jacks would have been a little bit better, if the macro would have been a little bit more spot on. So Link Bailey Muda, make sure to spend those minerals like I just said, and hopefully that helped you out. So if you want me to analyze your game, make sure to hit the subscribe button on Twitch TV. And other than that, I want to thank you guys all for watching. Have an amazing day. Do not forget to smile and I will see you in the next video. Hello everyone, my name is Loco and welcome to a new replay analysis. Today we're not gonna take a look at a game of mine, but we're gonna take a look of Chill King's game. Chill King is a gold level Zerg and we're gonna have a look at what went wrong in this Zerg versus Zerg. Now Chill King is...